introductions and before kind of going over the agenda and fully launching the meeting. Does that sound good for folks? Uh, so yeah, Pam, I just said hi a few minutes ago. Pam, I'm Shana Casper, I live on Kent Street. Um, and I'm the chair and during the rest of my time, yeah, I do um, organizing with communities fighting pollution threats in their neighborhoods. Um, and I'll pass it to Michael. I'm Michael Sherman, I'm a longtime resident of Montpelier, um, and I've served on a couple of, and currently serve on a couple of other city committees, and have served on a few more. Um, and I'm, as I said, mostly retired, except for all this volunteering that I'm doing. Cameron, do you want to go? Sure. Um, uh, my name is Cameron Niedermeyer. Uh, realized that my says memorial room i will change that briefly um but i'm the assistant city manager here for the city of montpelier and i am staff support for this committee and palin do you want to go yeah hi pam welcome and hi everyone i am palin con um i work uh, at norwich university and I'm a um, kind of drama fighter right now because I have two teenagers at home, 14 and 12. So every day is a new and interesting day for us, but I'm, I'm surviving, so. Uh, and Jeremy? Good evening, everyone. Uh, so I'm Jeremy Beaudry, live in Montpelier on Elm Street with my partner and our three youngest kids, um, the oldest of which just turned 12 yesterday. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. Um, yeah, fairly new to this to the city. Um, just past our four year mark. Um, when I'm not doing things like this, I do work for the University of Vermont Medical Center, um, doing kind of design and innovation types of work there. Jeremy. And Julia? I'm Julia Schaefitz. Pam, Pam knows me. I'm, I'm right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all a reminder for Jeremy, too. This is Jeremy's uh, so third like, meeting, second meeting. So, uh, third, there we go. Okay. Let's see. I've lived in Montpelier for 11 years, I think. And um, I have a seven year old who's in first grade at Union Elementary and I'm active with the um, Caregivers Alliance there, um, and which is what we now call the Care Parents Group. And I'm a therapist in private practice, social worker by training, and that's me. <laughs> so, oh. oh. I was just gonna say the other box here is Orca Media. And I don't, I don't think you guys have ever introduced yourselves if you want to. <laughs> I'll hold on for a sec. But we get it recorded, put on Orca Media, FYI. All right, go ahead, take it away, Pam. So my name is Pam and um, I'm a, I guess I'm a friend of Julia's for about 11 years now. <laughs> if you've been in Montpelier that long. Um, but uh, I live on Liberty Street and I've lived uh, in Montpelier for about the same length of time. Before that, I lived in Washington, Vermont. And, um, but I'm not a Vermonter, although this is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. So in my imagination, I am a Vermonter. Um, Julia, uh, we got talking and she brought up, well, she actually sent out an email and the first time I decided I wasn't the right person. And then when she sent it out again, I thought, um, maybe I am the right person. And so uh, I'm just really uh, looking forward to seeing Julia's filled me in and I've read some of the work that you've been doing. My intention is to be probably pretty quiet during this meeting, but um, I'm very supportive of this work and I hope that I really have something to add to it. I've, I've worked on committees before and probably here in Vermont outside of work. Um, I was on the board of the Orchard Valley Waldorf School, which is challenging work because they have a consensus um, mode of, uh, of, of work. And so that, that can be really, it's a flat hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And so you go to be very patient. And so that's me. Thanks so much, Pam. 
Um, and I, I got a note from Lauren that she's running a little bit late and um, yeah, have not heard from Alitha or uh, Janelle. So I'll try to check in with them because I haven't seen them in a little bit. Um, so uh, for uh, the agenda that I draft that I've got here um, is, uh, you know, review, reviewing and approving the agenda, public comment, um, minutes from November 19th meeting, um, check in about our, the budget, this, the um, city budget process, fundraising check in, our kind of creative discourse, outreach, work plan check ins. Um, and then to dive into the strategic uh, planning discussion that Pellin had um, raised at the end of our last meeting. And then for other business, I just uh, wanted to check in about um, upcoming meetings. because I was just like, we just had a meeting and I haven't done anything since then. Um, so just if we wanted to um, space things out a little bit more over the holidays, knowing that things are gonna start picking up in January. Um, so can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So move. Thanks, Michael. Julia, were you going to second? Yes, I second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And Cameron, we're still expecting that Robert's rules for the, under the tree, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. <no. laughs> going to hand bind them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Please don't. <laughs> we, we are learning. We're struggling. OK. Um, so uh, let's pull up the November 19th meetings minutes. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, and just spend one minute looking them over now. I'm sorry, did you want me to pull them up um, on the screen? Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think I just um, sent them out with the email. Sorry, Pam. It's okay. I don't know if you got the version where I corrected this my misspelling of Pellin's name on the second uh, at, at the very end. Um, yep. Is it correct there? Yeah. What do you have? Okay, good. How important is that stuff? Because I did see my name is spelled wrong at the bottom of the first page, at the bottom of section four. Well, we it's should a get typo. It right. Okay. I mean, well, uh, where where is it misspelled? At the bottom of section four. Oh, I see an extra is S. Yeah. All right. No, That's when you say, it's just my clumsy fingers. Yeah. So. When you say that you want to you vote to approve, you just say with amendments and then Michael can just move whatever. Cool. I move that we approve the meeting notes from the last meeting with amendments. Thanks, Julia. I second. Thanks, Jeremy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Nice work, team. Okay. Um, so budget process updates. Maybe I was hoping that Lauren would be here for, for some of this as well, but maybe we'll get the update from Cameron um, before the update from Jeremy, if that sounds good. Cool. Um, so I did send, Jeremy had uh, reached out to me. I did send the council your note. Hopefully you all saw that. Um, I did not receive any questions. So um, I think it was pretty straightforward and made sense to me. Um, so I actually just got finished uh, right before I came here. I was meeting with our um, finance director and Bill to sort of put our final stamp on our presented budget. Uh, we will be presenting that to council next Wednesday. Um, they'll be hopefully getting their budget books mo by Monday at the latest to look at it. So where we're at is a, um, uh, we're presenting under, um, an, under a 0% um, tax increase. So what we're really doing is level funding across everyone's budget, which is probably approximately $1.6 million deficit, right? So we had this huge deficit that we needed to make up. 
we put in some very aggressive capital projects and um, equipment cuts along with cuts throughout our general fund and our general operations. So what that sort of means is that we prioritize people over projects because we see this as a temporary thing that we need to get through, not a, a new state of being, right? So we wanted to be ready and have our staff prepared to jump back on any projects that we may get funding for. If new federal money comes on the table, we wanna be prepared and ready to bring that back on board. So we have a list of projects that have been sidelined for fiscal year 22, which again, we're talking about, you know, 2021 July at this point. So quite a ways away. Um, so we really are trying to prioritize um, being ready and keeping our service levels as high as we possibly can in this situation that we find ourselves. Council will have a lot of policy decisions to make if we add funding back. Um, and I think that's where your work is in going to be the most impacted because our budget right now assumes zero dollars for a lot of um, some of the more community service oriented outreach that we do. We do a lot of transfers to things like the community fund and some other um, larger ticket items. Um, let me stare at this. So I think that will be where the conversation um, comes into play and where you guys might want to speak up to council if you have an opinion one way or the other. So that will be out, uh, hopefully, like I said, Friday or Monday, and we will, I'll send that to y'all so you can see it. And I'll highlight what page is important I, that I think you would find important. They are all important, all 47 of them, but um, you know the ones that you might find interesting and where those cuts have been proposed. Staff has taken uh, kind of a hard line at what we think. We, we have no, I guess, the political opinion of what should be included and what shouldn't be included. We just um, basically zeroed everything out and allowed council to be, to add things back, accepting a few things. And y'all are on that exception. So our, the proposed budget for 22 still has y'all fully funded at that 10K that the council committed to because council committed to multiple years your project. And so we're not trying to back out and I, everything I'm saying has to be taken with a grain of salt. Like council may change things, the voters may change things, but the way we're presenting it includes that $10,000. It also includes a Montpelier Alive and you know, the cemetery flags, which can never be taken away. So <laughs> they're, they're off limits. So um, that's a really bizarrely hasty introduction to where we're at with the budget. It's just um, right now it's still a moving target, a lot of policy decisions that council will have to make. Just like a persnickety question, um, but you know, $400,000 persnickety. I thought it was a $2 million deficit. And so now it's 1.6. Is that because like what, what's the change there? Uh, I'm, I'm just in general revenues are shaking out slightly different than we, we projected them to be. Okay. So that's really where the issue comes in is that we're facing a large revenue right. because we have such a, um, a diversified revenue stream. I think a lot of single revenue stream governments are doing a lot better than us, frankly, because they have a solid state where everything's coming from property tax. But since we don't rely as heavily on property tax and we have things like parking so that we can sort of self-regulate our tax, not everything is reliant on a tax increase, to support, we do have um, a lot of ups and downs. We did get the state, bless you, I saw you in the background. We do have, um, I'm going to, I don't want to misspeak, but I know we got a pilot that came in higher than we anticipated from the state. Okay. And that is something that we don't anticipate to continue to go up. We assumed a $300,000 loss going into 22 from pilot funding, um, just from the state, because you know things are really not picking up and they probably won't. We wanna be as conservative with that as possible, so. And that's the payment in lieu of taxes from the state instead of paying property taxes, cool, okay. 
We also have a local pilot that we're also down downgrading. Our local options tax is coming in low. And then we also assumed that we will have less delinquent taxes, will have less payment for penalty for delinquent taxes and the interest on that as well. So there's, it's a lot of moving parts to be honest, but I think we've come in at a really good conservative effort to try to, to mitigate some of that without uh, being a burden on the tax rate. Any other questions for Cameron on this um, before hand it over to Jeremy? I didn't realize that I gotten sent in. So think like, I don't know why I, I goofed there. So thank you so much for sending it in. Um, would love to hear how the process went and um, any response that you've gotten or anything else. Uh, well, I think as Cameron said, I mean, I didn't hear anything if she didn't hear anything. Um, it would be nice to hear from Lauren if and when she joins to see if she has any buzz about how it was received. Um, but thanks everybody for weighing in um, with comments um, and, and feedback either way. Um, so I think given the short turnaround time, um, what we were able to put together as a committee. I mean, it felt like a substantial thing to offer the city council. Um, I think, um, and this kind of came through in, in the letter, um, and I felt you all were in agreement with it, was that this could be the start of a larger conversation about how the city engages in an equitable budgeting process kind of from day one. Uh, so in some ways, you know, in terms of playing the long game, that's a more interesting prospect, in my opinion, is how can we start thinking about, you know, the budget process for FY23, right? Like, and how do you start socializing and also institutionalizing a, perhaps a different approach of, of thinking about, you know, how programs and services are funded and how revenue is generated too. Um, so, I think that'll be something for us to keep our, our eyes on um, apart from the immediate urgency of the, the pending budget is, you know, where can the conversation go next? Um, you know, I think with anything like this, you know, quote unquote, a tool, you know, it, it's tough to just dump something in somebody's lap and, and pr particularly in the 11th hour and be like, okay, here's this thing, you're gonna use it, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, an item for discussion now might be, are there things we can do to support council in having this conversation with this tool that we've provided? Um, I, and and I, being unfamiliar with the process, I don't know where the opportunities are, but is it, are we attending council meetings? Um, are we participating in other ways? Are we reaching out to council more than we might otherwise um, to offer support? So. Um, I think that's kind of where things stand and curious if anybody has any thoughts about that. Well, I can certainly talk about the process and like sort of where I see availability to like key in um, without being on the agenda. So we're, we're really, our budget, our, yeah, the budget will take up the majority of every agenda moving forward through January. Um, uh, I think we have like one other thing on the next week agenda. So they're meeting next week is the first sort of public hearing for the budget um, that would be a 1000% appropriate time to, to talk to them about not only this um, but your feelings on the budget um, also uh, we will be launching our uh, public budget priority survey um, so we have a, a place where people can openly talk about their budget priorities as uh, residents or interested folks be a resident to take that by any means um, and uh, that is sort of where I see uh, writing to the council is also appropriate um, but we will be meeting the 9th and then the next meeting is not till the 6th of January so we're meeting next week and then the 6th of January 
Thanks. I mean, yeah, Jeremy, I think you bring up a really good point that we, we can't just dump this in their laps and ex expect them to, to take it up. Um, and so I guess I wonder if, um, I, again, we haven't seen the parts of the budget that are zeroed out, but maybe as like individuals and not as a committee, you know, we could, you know, take on different pieces that have been zeroed out and make the, like, do the analysis at, at, just so that it's not like, I, I don't I, I don't know why I said that, but um. I guess that kind of, it does kind of make sense to me, but like have us as individuals make do the analysis of, of here's here's why I think that the we should prioritize this. Here's what the you know unintended consequences are going to be by uh, zeroing out this budget, and you know, maybe like you know calling up some of the folks involved in in that budget item, or uh, you know just doing some of that work and recognizing this is like a super tight turnaround. Like if we get it on. You said Friday or Monday, Cameron, is when the draft will come out. Mm -hmm. And then if the first meeting's on Wednesday, um, and yet either like sharing those by email um, to the city councilors or um, or presenting, you know, at, at city council meeting. Like, yeah, what it, just as starting the conversation is <laughs> an idea of what could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does the, 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 but does the document you've been talking about, Cameron, show show what has been zeroed out or does it only show what's what's in? No, it will show you zeroed out live. Oh, okay, good, mm -hmm. that, that, that's good. Yeah, budgets, they'll usually, they our budget will show you what was adopted the year before. So it'll show you 2020, the actual for 2020, uh, the adopted budget for 2021, and then what we're proposing for 22. That, that's what I would have expected. I just wanted to confirm that. And just to get a sense, how many like what what is like the total number of line items that were zeroed out? Uh, a lot. So okay. um, that goes through the whole budget. We weren't this isn't just like we're not picking on anything in particular. It's um, but if you look in past budgets, you would find a lot of it's not I say discretionary in a way that under, I, I want to underscore that we think these are not discretionary. Does that make sense? They're funds that are optional based on council's priorities. Council makes the final decision on what to include, but you would see them under our general fund expenditures under community enhancement. That I'm saying I think you would be most interested in talking about. And normally those are towards the end of any budget document. Let me drop in the chat a link for you to find our past budget so you can get an understanding of what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I had it more last year's in last week's email too, if folks want to pull that up. But yeah, if you can drop it in the chat, that would be great. So yeah, would folks like have the capacity and interest in going through this this sheet for you know, two or three items that matter a lot to you? Yeah, I can, I mean, I'm, I'm interested and in willing to look at um, some things. That I, I don't know what I don't know. So I, <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna be like to actually get in there and feel like um, I have my footing, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to try and use the tool. <laughs> Yeah. I also just wonder if stuff showing up at the beginning of the during the public comment period and just telling about the tool a little bit too, like maybe yep. giving an example, yep. but like like walking them through how, what it is and how we might use it. Mm -hmm. Because will there also be a, with, mm, would want to make sure that we, this gets discussed like at the beginning, could this be in the public comment at the beginning or would this be under the, the budget discussion piece or is it just going to be the public comment for the budget regardless? 
Um, I could see. Well, I could see the mayor going either direction on do you want clarification of the budget tool, but I think um, if you if I'll, I'll give Anna the mayor a heads up that you would like to speak on that and so she can be aware that that's coming. I think she'd probably be okay with putting that under the um, budget public hearing because that's you know that pertains to that so cool. um, so it is a public hearing so it's basically free time to chat about it after council chatted about it so yeah we could yeah email them out before during or after as well um but talking through the tool and then if folks are available to talk through um the particular line items um so yeah so on yeah 38 buildings and hall maintenance tree management board oh here we go sorry i can't talk in school <laughs> I'm gonna let the mayor know right now. Cool. So yeah, it looks like um, community arts program was allocated twenty thousand um, dollars. Community ENH, oh Montpelier Live, thirty two thousand dollars. Fourth of July celebration, four thousand mm, dollars. Some other things, holiday lights, and community enhancement, homeless tennis task force, forty five thousand dollars. Cemetery flags, fifteen hundred. Us, ten thousand. And then does that include the tree board stuff here too, Cameron? $145,000. What page are you on, Shana? 38. Mm -hmm. Now I'm on page 40. 40. Got it. So when when we have the final document out, um, I don't want to like misspeak. I'm not the arbiter of the document. If the city manager um, has last minute changes that he would like to make, I don't want to speak out of turn there. So. As soon as I have the copy in my hands, I will send it to y'all and highlight lines in there that I think would be important to look at. Um, mm -hmm. Change. So. so what you'll see, what you'll see a lot of when you look at this, when I send it out is um, transfers to other funds have been cut quite a lot because we're not transferring general fund money into some CIP projects. We've really cut back on most of those. Um, a lot of our departments are really getting by with the equipment that they have for this year. Um, and so I also, you know, council's talked about the budget a few times now and uh, with staff and, and staff went into this exercise this year, really understanding that we wanted to create this budget as sort of a stop gap. Not so much like, again, I, I think I said this before, we do not want to see this as steady state because we really do appreciate the high level services that we offer in our city that's like a really important thing to us so um it's it is pretty drastic the cut we're looking at a reduction okay that's unhelpful never mind but it is a big cut sorry it's been a no, long I mean, day i guess i'm just looking at it and it looks like it's all like under a hundred thousand dollars like it like library is separate like yes library you know, is separate yeah there's there's you know other pieces that i i um would really 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 want to make sure are still included that are not included in what's being zeroed out what are, justice what, center what are is that today? Oh, the community justice center gets most of the money through the state, so they're unaffected by our cuts. So how is that? How is if these are kind of like under a hundred thousand dollars each? How is that going to be adding up to one point six million? Oh, okay. So I think I miss I miscommunicated. So our total cuts across our CIP, our general fund, 
equal the gap, if that makes sense. So um, they're not all coming from this section in any way. They're just included in part of our class. This is just the section of the budget I, I think that you guys would have stronger opinions about than some of the other things that we've cut um, or proposing to cut, um, to correct my language there. Um, so I just am directing you to this section because I think it, it's just knowing this group would, would find important. There's some other, there's tons of stuff we cut. The amount that we cut outweighs what we kept in, honestly. So. Some of these items I see um, are showing up actually as applications to the community fund board, which I'm on, I'm on that board as well. So for example, Good Samaritan is, yeah. is, is uh, asking for money, um, people's health and wellness. Um, where else? So those are all zero. Those were zero in our 21 budget and remain zero in the 22. Right, but what's that, what what is what they're asking? We I don't know. We, we are meeting um, on in this on in December, middle of December. Um, but I know that some of those are asking for a lot more than they got in previous years, possibly because they were anticipating being cut out of the budget. So they may get funded. Um, in there were those used to be by petition instead of as as, uh, um, as items in the in the budget. <clears throat> that so, predicates the community fund being funded. Right. Which is, you know, everything is on the table this year. We were told, well, last I heard, we were told that we would be able to, we, we should consider giving uh, an equal amount from last year, but that was and that was not so long ago, but I don't, I haven't heard anything more since then. So, so is that, but is that for fiscal year 21, you were level five? No, 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 and we're not looking at 22, FY 22. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, wait, I have the numbers here last, when we, when we had last year. Um, 130. Yeah, something, change. that's right, yeah. So I don't know if we've heard I have not heard from our chair that we've been told that we should not even bother with this because no, there's no money there. Um, well, we don't, well, we, we couldn't tell you that with any sort of solidarity yet because council hasn't weighed in, right? uh -huh. but everything yeah. is on the table this year to be cut. Yeah. All right. But so I, I, I'm feeling a little caught on how to proceed here besides saying we should go on Wednesday like Jeremy, can you make Wednesday, next Wednesday to kind of present the tool and, you know, share the like intentions and how, like how the how to, um, and then based on what we hear on Friday and Monday, we can just send some emails to see it, like to make sure we're not du duplicating efforts or um, if there's anything really atrocious that we want to flag for other people. Um, the, but so Jeremy, does that does that work for you or? Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, I'm just wondering about how we coordinate around reviewing the submitted budget to kind of divvy the work up. I don't. Does that happen so, through? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jeremy. No, I'm just. I still am uncertain about how much conversation should or could yeah. happen through email. It doesn't sound like any. Um, so maybe Shanna, you just want to assign sections and we'll take them as we can. Okay. Or Julia, did you have? I, I don't feel, I don't feel competent to do that on my own, but I would feel happy to have a phone call or video call with somebody to go through something like to just like bounce ideas off each other mm -hmm. um, on Monday or Tuesday evening. What I will do um, for y'all is when I send this, when I send the um, electronic version out, highlight what I think you would find interesting. That might be not holistic at all, but I'll try to highlight that. And if you all have opinions personally, I really do recommend emailing city council those those issues that you have. And I think the more redundancy you have, the stronger your opinion is, right? I don't, divvying, my opinion is that divvying it up maybe 
counterproductive to what you would like to do. Hmm. And then we're, we're doing them also as individuals and not, you know, we don't have to have consensus around and have people review the things and things like that. Sorry, so okay, yeah, Julia. I think if we were, if we were to be able to, if anybody wants, wanted to join me for a conversation on Monday, yeah. um, I feel like what we could do is kind of um, pick one, um, line item to take through the tool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to not, you know, A, for the purpose of some advocacy, but kind of more importantly, for the purpose of showing council how to use yep. it yep. and um, to be able to say like, here's, here's an example. And, and we did this in, you know, in the course of tw yeah. you know, 30 minutes. So it's not like a research project you have to write about each line item that's, that's coming, but like, here, here's an example of how, how you might run through this tool. And I think that might be more effective. I mean, obviously we should all do our own individual advocacy and, and, and um, you know, voicing our opinions. But I think in terms of the role of this committee, if what we can do is teach them how to do it, that would be probably much more, more effective and, and like, you know, work toward our long-term goal of having them be able to like know how to use this tool and use it more effectively. Yeah, Julia, if that makes sense to me and since it sounds like I'll be presenting why don't you and i chat sounds good sorry just to to throw you there but yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome mm -hmm. um and we can do that do that exercise <laughs> no i think it makes sense um so yeah we can we can find a time julia that's cool sounds good thank you jeremy yeah any other yeah thoughts or reflections on on the budget process we're moving into the focus groups cool okay yeah would love to move through these a little bit quickly if we can so we'll have enough time for strategic planning discussion um, as well but so fundraising check-in um, anyone have any anything to share yeah I'm, oh yeah I just um Set, I've been busy with other things, but I just sat down uh, early this afternoon and um, and found the Abelard Foundation East. Has someone looked into them already? I oh, did. Um, it looks like they, they, it looks like we would be eligible. I printed out their their guidelines and uh, frequently asked questions. And they do give money to government organizations, to the government institutions, which we. Uh, which many of the others have, have do not. But what, what, what had you found, Shana? Let I'm trying to see if I can find my notes. So I thought. Um, sorry, one moment. It's still loading. Apologies. Oh wait a minute! I was in. I was wrong about that. About Abelard. They do not. I, I just had them in the wrong category. What types of organizations do you not fund? And it includes government agencies and programs undertaken by tech supported institutions. So I guess that was, I was reading hopefully rather than literally. My notes are literally, <laughs> looks like we would be a good fit. And then the neck, like then there's a space then it's not the right fit now. So I don't remember. <laughs> But that that was that was, those are my notes. So I don't know what I was talking about. But um, I did not think we should apply. And it, okay, was was there another? It was was that the only one, Michael? That you were? That's I know they, it was like they looked so good, and then yeah, once you start right. looking into it, yes, right? I, um, I didn't. You know, my my mind skipped over the word not. <laughs> um, and for an editor, that's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'll keep going. I still have this this page that these couple of pages that I assembled, and I'm working my way slowly through them, crossing things off as um, uh, as yeah. I as I work my way. Um, but so great, sorry. and we should be hearing back from um, from our community foundation soon too. So fingers crossed on that. And when Julia, you applied to the Awesome Foundation. When do they? When will they tell you? Tell us. It kind of sounded like we may or may not ever know. 
<laughs> unless we get money. It was sort of like, you know, we don't respond to all. It's a very informal, I think a very informal organization and I, I haven't heard anything. But okay, it, was well, really, it was a really low ex uh, output of uh, energy, so it was worth it. Um, there's one of the foundation that was not on my on my list, which is the Haymarket Foundation, and I will look into that that one. There, they have some Montpelier connections, and that was someone I was trying to meet up with one of their former board members, yes. and we never he, uh, made it happen. So I apologize. Uh, he used to teach. Yeah, he used to teach Spanish at CCV. What's his name? Uh, mm. He's an Asian. I was Asian thinking guy. of a player, uh, so I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, different people. What was Great. it called? The Hayes Foundation. The Haymarket. As in, I heard that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I can look into it too. And, and I know, I know someone who was the connection for the grant that when I was at the Vermont Historical Society, we got a grant from the Haymarket Foundation for a conference on the McCarthy era. And the person who, who um, did it was a friend of the guy who was on the Haymarket board. That's a long time ago. That's 1986 or something like that. He, um, he may still be on their board, but 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 I'll check about that. That would what be say, Julia? more longevity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? That would be some serious longevity in a board position. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, there are boards like that. <laughs> Yeah. And, or maybe he know maybe he could put you in touch with someone who's still yeah right. but isn't that what, what Claire Wheeler was is that the one that Claire it was, was Claire called? Wheeler thank you that's yep well, well if you know somebody who's there currently that would be it's worth asking um he just left but I um it could be worth yeah. asking she might be able to guide us on how to well, I, I'll go to their I'll go to their website, see what I can find, and and um, and if it looks like it's promising, I'll push forward with that. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Michael. Um, outreach. I have once again this week. Done, I can't believe the week has gone and have not done any additional outreach, and I apologize. Um, and we have not had our meeting with Creative Discourses yet, so I don't know if, why we don't. I don't have any update from them um, from the questions that we had last time. Cameron, I owe you an email draft that I didn't do yet, but I will. That's okay. I also had um, because we've been in deep in budget. I had a follow up item about a commitment statement. Um, I have time carved out of my calendar for tomorrow, and I, I knew it was after this meeting. And I just also I feel like we're just all apologizing. So. So but let's not is, feel bad about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when is your meeting with um, Creative Discourse so that I make sure that it's done and dusted before then? 16. Wonderful. Are we supposed to be re recruiting for the first three um, uh, focus groups or are we looking at, are we trying to do it all, all of it at once? I mean, I put <laughs> off my... I put off mine because thinking that the first three were where we were mostly focusing our attention. But, but what 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 is the what should I be doing? My sense is that like um, soft out like if you like awareness raising type of recruiting at this point it, like so informal because um, we don't have the like or we don't have we don't know exactly what's happening when and so like what would you even be asking someone to do at this point other than just like, hey, like I thought of you and I just wanted to put this on your radar screen that this could be coming up and please let me know if you have any questions and here's what the work looks like kind of thing. Is that- you And who else should we be asking? I think yeah. like, yeah, starting the, probably the conversation. Yeah. And then is the, the action there to send to creative discourse that individual's contact info? Correct. Okay. If they're if they're down, okay. Um, and I will say I I also included the link of the groups and all the contact information for the point people who had volunteered for these different um, like focus groups to the newsletter list. And I will also yeah, so I sent the newsletter out by um, BCCing emails, not through Action Network, and got 
so many response and not so many, I got like three response, but like people who like either texted me or emailed me back and were just like, I'm like, so this looks so great. I'm so excited that you're doing this work. I got a really good note from Jamie who used to be on the, on the, on the committee and who was just like so grateful that we're still pushing through on this. So, um, that was just, that was like affirming to be like, after sending it through action network and getting no response, um, this is the right way to do it. And I will, um, you know, just keep, uh, trying to, you know, keep, keep the steady drum beat up there as well. So also for that though, sent, you know, like trying to include, have it not just be like, here's our, you know, tiny step forward update that we've done with creative discourses, but also just anything else that, um, that we, um, that we can share about what's going on in our community around social, economic, and racial justice. So feel free to just like keep forward me stuff. I kind of go through the front, the front porch forums um, and pulling it together, but would love your guys's thoughts. Yeah. Julia, were you gonna say something? Okay. I was, I was gonna ask when your next one is just to put on my radar. But some, sometime. When, when I have a free hour. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and so also though, just noting that I sent out this document that has all of your emails. So if someone is interested, they should be reaching out to you. Um, I don't know if we should be doing other like gen general outreach like this as well, or if she should wait till January of like, you know, if you're interested in, in having this type of conversation, you know, e maybe we'll wait until after we have the draft from Julia and do that for the internal stuff first and before doing the, you know, more broad outreach, I suppose. I answered my own question there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Anything else on the outreach and work plan and fundraising? I just want to ask Pam if you have any like we're we're kind of talking yeah. about things we not know about, but is there any is there anything you want clarification on? You're muted. Um, just so the newsletter comes out monthly or no? When that's the goal, but <laughs> I see. not, not I with really a not specific right date now. in mind. Yeah. Okay, great. And then um, what is it that you're drafting, Julia? Um, a, um, one of the first focus groups with the consultants is going to be for um, BIPOC city staff, current and former, I think, yeah. Um, and so I was gonna draft a, like an email to, to invite folks. Okay, thank you. And that, that letter is gonna go to Cameron to distribute, is that? Is that right? So you, Cameron, you'll be the person basically scoping out who's there, right? Yeah, so I have um, already sort of broached this topic with staff. Um, folks know that this is happening. This isn't gonna be a surprise to anybody. Um, you know, I've, I, I've randomly selected folks for like the more general conversation, but with the vicinity groups, I want to make sure that we're being sensitive in our language. We're not making folks feel you know, singled out um, for participation. Um, definitely want folks to know that they don't, if they don't want to, they don't have to, um, especially with our past employees. We're not trying to um, get free labor out of folks, just, you know, a betterment of the city. So um, uh, just trying to be sensitive. And I really do appreciate Julia's um, help with this. So, but yeah, people know it's coming. For the most part, I, I just to editorialize are just really excited about this. It's definitely, it's one of those things that it, it's so important to have done and then so important to have done right because doing it wrong causes more damage than anything. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Especially if we're not going to be zeroed out in a time when a lot of other organizations are going to be, we better be sure this gets done well. This is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, well, that was actually one question that I had as I started to think about a draft. I have like a half baked draft. Um, I, w I wanted to talk about confidentiality and like um, 
you know, I know, I'm sure that the that the specific statements will be confidential, but I also want to be careful not to promise confidential. Like if it's three people, right. and we and like you know, you know who those three people are, it's going to be kind of uh, tricky. So I I wasn't sure how to if anyone has input as to like how I should. Um, I guess so my my understanding and this should maybe Shana it'd be a good thing to ask creative discourse is is making sure statements aren't presented as statements right so it's not quotes from this it's general ideas if that makes sense so like your what you discuss will be you know we will distill the or creative discourse will distill the core issues out of those statements right so like if you gave me just a core statement of what's going on by the three staff, I won't know who's like saying what, right? Because um, I think that's a good point, especially in such a small organization. I know how people write sentences, right? If you gave me an email, took the name off, I'd probably be able to point out who sent it. So, um, you know, making sure that it's not a quote, it's a, a core takeaway that- I, so it's what I'm hoping for. And so just double checking with creative discourse that that's how that information will be presented. Exactly. See, I mean, I'm also working on this environmental justice policy project with Keisha for the past year. And we've been having these focus groups. And for those, we, we say very explicitly at the beginning of them that this is not a confidential meeting. Like, well, we will try our best to ensure your confidentiality, like, and what's said here stays here and what's learned here leaves here. Like this, the group is made up of other people in the that same often tight knit community as well, and so of it is you know just recognizing that it's it's not a confidential space. Like although you know there's that commitment and there's that you know um, named thing that that there isn't like that base of of trust necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'll, fi I'll I'll find a way to say that you know privacy will be honored, but we can't ensure. Mm. Um, however, that that efforts will be made to make sure that um, I don't know My information. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. The, that was shared out publicly um, gets shared at the level of. Um, I, so I don't even. I actually realizing like I don't know. I don't know how they work, and I'm not going to say that on behalf of the leaders. Mm -hmm. um, but I will. I actually maybe it's making me wonder if, if um, we, should we should run, check on we should run the draft by them as well. Yep, and just to get on the same page about yep. what is the exactly. goal. Yeah, <laughs> not not just for the language, but for the, right. the intention. You, yeah. Um, in terms of what, like, sort of like uh, what to ask from them, like making that draft, and I just send it to uh, to to them and to Cameron together, and just say, here's the draft we're working on. Feel free to comment, or we can talk about it on the sixteenth. This in turn. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Really great. Thank you. Awesome. Do you know if it is CD's practice to tape record these or do they just take notes? I don't know. The project I've worked on, it was a, a like tape recorder. That's an IRB old approved. Word. They just record, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No, but we it was like a, it was a, you know, where they're, we're then transcribing all of the meetings and like de-identifying, you know, it's a very academic process. So I don't yeah. think that's, I don't know what they do. We should ask. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Cool. Any other questions for creative discourse? Yeah, let's, let's open it up. <laughs> We've got quite the list growing. Well, yeah, and feel free to email too. All right, let's talk about our strategic plan. I had put this in my notes coming out of the last meeting of having it be more about like COVID relief and COVID response in Montpelier. Um, and I really appreciated seeing it as like what, like having this bigger picture conversation about what is our strategic plan and what is our, what is our, like what is our task as this committee? Um, writ large and in this moment. And so I think like taking that big step back of saying like, you know, who are we as a committee and why um, as a way to start this conversation does make, all, make a lot of sense to me before diving into 
we're in a global pandemic and a economic crisis and what is our role of how we show up in our community in this time. Um, so before going into that, um, I did send out like our most recent kind of campaign plan um, that we had come up with I over a year ago now. Um, this is kind of like our last iteration before we said, you know what, we need to hire some consultants. <laughs> so thank you so much, Julia, for facilitating this process and for drafting this plan. Um, and so do you want to kind of walk through it or should, should I? This is our like overarching. You're welcome. I think it was you. Was it me? <laughs> yeah, I think you did. I think you was it. But I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't looked at it since then. So I would love if you would, if, if you're willing to. Well, so I'm just gonna like talk at you guys for like five or so minutes. So just as a quick reminder, you know, we were created as a committee back in 2018. I'm making this up. I should have looked this up beforehand. Um, out of this recognition that you know Montpelier, uh, that, that there are these you know historic and ongoing systems and structures in our nation, our state, and our community that perpetuate racism, sexism, heterosexism, classism, ableism, and other forms of injustice and oppression. So that's kind of why we were formed to address and reshape the systems, policies, and practices that perpetuate these barriers. Um, and so specifically charged with identifying and nurturing potential projects, policies, and opportunities that address systemic oppression and work towards greater equal equity within our city, engaging a, a genuinely broad range of city residents and discussing and addressing systemic oppression at the city and community levels in order to move our community increasingly towards equity and justice, and partnering with other city, county, and statewide groups working towards equity and justice to foster long-term far-reaching projects, goals, and developments that will ultimately serve to increase equity and justice in Montpelier. And so um, kind of coming out of that charge, now I've lost it, of, of having kind of four main campaigns, so to speak. Um, so one of uh, like, Po projects and policies. And so this is kind of like, what are the key issues that we need to respond to and um, are tasked by the city council to address? So like, for example, um, the, um, so by, by the city council and by our community, right? So for example, we, um, you know, the city council said, we're looking at doing a living wage ordinance. And so can you guys look into that and like draft a, you know, what, what should we do about a living wage ordinance? Or we're considering body cameras as a requirement for police. Can you guys look into that and, you know, let us know what your thoughts are about this. And so um, that's like historically a role that we have played. And then we've also done that like for the community as well. So of, you know, when folks have come and said, you know, a high school student has dealt with this really horrific racism by, you know, city police, like, what should we do? You know, we don't want to, you know, make this public. So like, what are, are, what are pathways that we could go forward? So if, you know, both responding to the two individual requests, just through our personal networks and through from the city council. Um, and so we, um, our plan was kind of just to continue doing this work. So just continuing to identify some specific campaign goals. And this is where he said, we don't know what those campaign goals should be. If we're gonna prioritize them, let's hire a consultant. Um, so I'm not gonna kind of read through all of it. So then the second one is like committee learning. And so I think this is what Julia did a really good job with that I've like totally dropped the ball on as chair the past six months of just, um, as a committee being a space for us to continue to dismantle our own internalized, um, you know, systemic oppressions that we hold and perpetuate. Um, so of continuing to like have this be like a learning and growing space together. Um, so of having, you know, a plan for, you know, uh, going to different workshops and reporting back to the committee or, um, you know, participate in other, um, other retreats or trainings or readings or things like that and sharing, um, sharing to get back together as a team. Um, we also have the public engagement. So of, I'm um, just gonna read it again, engaging a genuinely broad range of city residents and discussing and addressing systemic oppression at the city and community levels in order to move our community increasingly towards equity and justice. Um, and so of you know, engaging with some of these different groups that we're reaching out to for these, for these focus groups. Um, and uh, again, I think we, we realized that 
we didn't know how, you know, how to go about doing this in a way where it would not be, um, like, uh, not transactional what's the word we're like we're getting the information and providing nothing in response um you know as a you know majority white uh uh city committee um and then there's the cross-pollination so of partnering with other city county and statewide groups working towards equity and justice to foster long-term far-reaching projects goals and developments that will ultimately serve to increase equity and justice in montpelier so um we had some great uh, ideas of how to go about this. Um, I'm seeing a pattern here of where we have these like really great and <laughs> um, thoughtful plans and I have not been um, touching base on this plan or moving forward in it. Um, but, uh, you know, developing a plan and structure to interface with other city committees. So we were gonna like have you know, uh, each of us go and present to all the other city committees about our work and see if there were opportunities to collaborate, um, having a framework to, to review policies, which we, we did do, but haven't, um, haven't been like implementing necessarily. Um, and so then, we, yeah, so came up with this, this, um, these goals and these plans, and then decided to hire consultants, and then COVID hit. So here's, that's, that's basically the, the whole, I think, arc of our committee's committee's work. Um, I guess primarily looking at Michael and Julia, do, like who were here for the development of this. Was, is there anything else around like intention or outcome around this that I'm that I'm missing? I would say no. I mean, I think when by the time you came on, the committee was just on the verge of collapse. Um, because we couldn't, we, for one thing, we were just a kind of, it was a revolving door of membership. And, um, and we really couldn't agree on very much of what we were going to do. There, there was some who were pushing very hard in one direction, some who were resisting some, some of that. So I think we've achieved a, a, a level of stability and, and then that's, that to me is represented by this contract that we have with Creative Discourse. And as much as I like uh, the idea of strategic planning, it seems to me that we, that we may be doing this a little bit too early because some of what I would see coming out of the report from, from the end of our project or even partway through the project will help us figure out where we need to put our attention. Um, uh, um, some of the issues that you went back and, and, and mentioned, Shana, um, you know, they've either been resolved or, they, or been shelved. Um, the issue of the body cameras, I'm, not, I'm on the police Great. review board and that's coming up now. Um, and as Cameron pointed out, it's not just whether you buy a, ca a camera and pin it on, you know, the patrol, the patrol person's lapel. It's what do you do with all those records? How do you manage them? How do you make them accessible? So, so and it, all of that has big financial implications. So we were given, you know, a policy statement the, the, this committee was given a policy statement, which subsequently was then withdrawn because uh, the, of what happened in Burlington, um, where, where there was a big suit, a lawsuit about access to them. And I, and I don't know how that ever got resolved, but it certainly raised the whole question about the costs and the, and the, and the way you go about it. So I, I'm not sure wh where we are that we can actually do planning um, no, I completely agree. I just, I think I wanted my intention of going over the plan was to center us again into where we've come from and, and what our intentions and our, 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 our path has been before having the conversation about COVID response. Yeah. Uh, I think. Can I say something? I think I found it very uh, useful for me because I wasn't here when this plan uh, was done. So I, didn't know that there's a like um, community learning part, yeah. which I think Julia and Tabata, right, they are in the school board. So they know what our kids need in terms of social justice and equity. And we can develop projects um, in schools to teach uh, kids because I think it is very important if they are aware of uh, in a younger age, right 
uh, I am, you know, Turkish and my kid, when we moved here three years ago, she uh, was in the middle school and she brought Turkish food for lunch and her uh, friends, I know they don't have a uh, bad intention, but they made fun of the food. And now, although my <laughs> daughter loves eating Turkish, but she doesn't bring any with her outside when there are friends around her. And I was very shocked that middle school uh, didn't teach those kids like cultural, uh, you know, differences. It is not that they need to eat or enjoy, but the reaction and that age peer pressure is huge, you know, on the kids. So I understand my daughter, but now, yeah, she doesn't eat or bring any Turkish food with her school camp you know picnic i found it very uh, hurtful right so we can do something uh, in schools we can talk about it doesn't have to be we will just start right now but at least we can start talking about these things so i don't know maybe storytelling with the kids about social justice and having like very short workshops, you know, something like that. But I didn't know that we have that education part or piece. So it was very good for me. So thank you. And I'll just say how uh, Julia incorporated this as chair was at the beginning of every meeting, we would um, like do a pair share, like do breakout, you know, essentially what would be breakout groups on Zoom and just share about like, something that you've been working on or learning personally and, and kind of report back to the group. And so, yeah, I would love to reincorporate that into our agendas if possible. So this was a really good touchstone. I just want to say it's really interesting that you mentioned that particular anecdote, Helen, because I was listening to a podcast today that was talking about racism with food and food. I'm going to put a link in the podcast because it was really good and you might either find it interesting or you might want to share it with your daughter. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. It will be great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very guys, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I, I think like you, Pellen, it's really helpful to see this document, even though it's, you know, a little bit from a year ago and things have changed, particularly with the creative discourse. Um, engagement. Um, but I think it's, it's actually really, it's something to hold on to. As we do wait on what we're going to learn from the creative discourse work. Um, so I'm looking at some of these tactics do feel like they would be useful to do in parallel to what creative discourse is already doing. Um, so for example, you know, building more awareness about this committee um, and doing that by meeting with other city committees, other, you know, departments in the city. Um, I mean, I don't know what the awareness is of, in general of the committee, either within the city um, staff or just in the, the community in general. Um, but my, I think my point is, I could imagine us going through this um, in a kind of a systemic way that to identify, well, here's the things that we think we could actually do now or start working on while we wait for this larger research to unfold from creative discourse. Um, so that, you know, perhaps we're laying some groundwork so that when we do get that really rich data, um, we've got some things in place that we can launch into. And it, really, I think it's, I guess I'm thinking of it as like network building, like, um, how do we become yeah. a more visible presence? How do we become that interface between residents and the city when it comes to these kinds of issues um, and kind of just position ourselves to do that work when we're kind of ready. And so I think great segue to dive in to talk about COVID stuff because right, this is, oh, I'm so sorry, Pam, go ahead. I just, I just wanna make one comment also about the strategic planning because in my past life, you know, one of the things that we would always talk about whenever we're addressing, talking about a strategic plan is that this is a living document. Yeah. So 
it shouldn't be something that it's kind of like, oh, this is from last year. It's kind of like, I think it's really great to, I, I it sounds like everyone really appreciated revisiting it. And um, I think that uh, it helps to, it's great to have it outsourced and found, you know, like an authority that can really help us how to be relevant in, you know, with our charge, but also to have the work be relevant to committee members. It's great to, you know, keep on with just like Jeremy was saying. And I also think that it would be a great idea to um, reincorporate the committee learning because I think that we all have some sort of passion that brought us here and that helps to keep the committee itself you know, okay, I want to go on Thursday night because I know I'm going to get to share this podcast or hear about another great book or, you know, something, learn something from another community or something of that nature. So I just wanted to throw that two cents in there. So thanks for sharing it. And well, yeah, I think, I'm um, sorry, create no, go ahead. this course of it's my personal opinion and, you know, just my, um, um, observations, I think creative discourse wouldn't bring any new thing to us. I think they will support the things we are already oh, yes, feeling yes. and right. we will have a good uh, source in our hands to say, look, we want to do this because this is our data. Uh, this is why I just want to talk what the you know future projects will be for us. Uh, I know that a report will be very helpful, but I also know that when I read the report, I wouldn't see like a, <laughs> any surprising things, you know, maybe some, I don't know. I have been living here only three years. Maybe um, I will see and learn, probably I will, but general idea, I think will be the same uh, thing that we are feeling right now about social justice, equity, racism, all the other things we have been discussing in our committee. So we can start talking slowly about our future projects. It doesn't have to be, oh, let's do it and talk about, decide, go. Just the brainstorming for the future. Yeah. I, I just want to, I want to say, like, looking back at this document, it just seems like the the um, public engagement line, the purple one, um, is sort of what we've, I think very smartly, hired other people to help us with. <laughs> um, and then the that will probably feed the the policy priorities. Although at, at, as like I think Palin, that's a really good point that like as we as we start to learn from the community through the process with public discourse, uh, a creative discourse, we can probably start to populate, like really start to look into some of those policy priorities. But the other two line items, the committee learning and the cross pollination, like, as Jeremy said, those, those really aren't, they're separate work. Um, I mean, they're, they're interconnected, but they're, not, they're, they don't rely on us having that data yet to, to do. And so maybe that we want to start kind of really dig into to like the committee learning line item and the, and the um, cross pollination one and, and have someone take point on them or have really like move on them a little bit. Yeah. Well, this is sort of a segue, but one of the things that we've already, well, that's happening is that the, the police review committee is, we, uh, Lauren and I brought to them um, the, the response about um, getting the question about getting information from our focus groups here to the police review committee so that they don't have to go through the same the same process and then at the next meeting we'll be discussing specific questions to send to this committee CJAC to send forward off to, to creative discourse so that they can figure out if they want to and how they would integrate those questions into what they're going to talk about. So there is one connection that we've made, and obviously, whatever is going on at the school board about the uh, the school resource officer is is one of those places where it's good that Julia's there, to at least to to be able to report back to us what's going on. 
So I do, I just want to be mindful of time. We only have about 10 minutes left. And I think we're already starting to build our, you know, agenda for our next meeting of checking in on these questions that are going to be coming from police review committee of incorporate, you know, just starting to incorporate um, learnings and check-ins and report backs at the beginning of every meeting. Um, I am wondering if we should just punt our COVID conversation to the next meeting as well. Just, I don't want to start that and not like not be able to get far at all. Um, but I guess just to, to just to start it, I, you know, I think just like respond to what Pellin had brought up at the end of the last meeting, it's just like, right, this is the biggest, um, you know, crisis of my lifetime. And I have just felt really um, like stunted in knowing how to respond locally. You know, I'm, I, immunocompromised. I'm not going to go volunteer anywhere. I'm not going to like, besides like donating money or like checking in on my neighbors, like, you know, like it's it just feeling um, like there, there are a lot of people who are better at, at setting up the structures that need to happen. And so um, wanting to like check in and have that conversation about how we can, um, how we are, what we are uniquely positioned to do to help as CJAC. Um, right, because I think it, it, is that the question that we want to address as part of that conversation, or, or is there is there more to it, or to something different? I guess. Okay. Is there anything that I can provide information wise to y'all that would make that conversation easier? Like any data report? Yeah, I mean, I would think it's it's whatever data is available to see how the pandemic is impacting people broadly, but in particular, if there's a way we can drill down to some of the, the kind of underrepresented groups that are our focus. Um, yeah, any, anything you could scrounge up, I think would be awesome. Well, for underrepresented groups like writ large too, that has been the focus of our focus groups for this environmental justice policy project. And we're actually gonna be pulling them together into a report. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, over the next week, and so I should be able to, I sh um, be able to share some of those findings and mm -hmm. recommendations um, cool. coming out of that work as well. That's, that's more focused on state level stuff, but um, I, I'll, I can just pull that too. Mm -hmm. There was a conference and I did attend, um, it was over several days on housing that was uh, sponsored by the Human Rights Commission. Uh, I believe, but I'm not entirely sure that it was recorded. Um, and I'm just looking around to see if I still have the agenda, but, um, oh yeah, here it is. Um, the the at least the um, the keynote speech that, uh, was by uh, Richard Rothstein on the cult and he wrote a book called The Color of Law: Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America about housing. That was the focus of the conference, mm -hmm. um, and um, and I, and I guess it's just possible to talk to to talk to Bo Yang, who is the head of the Vermont Human Rights Commission, and find out. If that those if they if they did record it and if it's going to be made accessible. So that was a state focused conference, Michael. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, it was, it was. It was sponsored by the Human Rights Commission, and they sent around. I thought I I don't know how I got on the list, but I thought everybody on our committee would have gotten on the list. But um, it, it took place November seventeenth through the nineteenth. So I just need to, I have, I just need to understand what, Shana, what is it that you're, what is the COVID conversation that you're wanting to have? Um, I don't, I'm not quite clear. I think that is my question, Pam. <laughs> I think what I was proposing um, was uh, what, what is CJAC uniquely positioned to do to support our community during this crisis is that hmm. okay like what where's the gaps in in is, is that the helpful is that the question though that's i think what i was yeah 
You know, one of the things that I might uh, could do if you guys want to is invite some folks in the community who are doing that work right now. Um, uh, I know our uh, capital area group is really doing a lot of grassroots support and they would probably be um, uniquely positioned to tell you all what you could where you could plug in. So I'll reach out to the folks I know there. I'm seeing some nods. Um, maybe they'll just want to be part of that discussion. What was that community, Cameron? They're called the Capital Area Neighborhoods. Oh. If you live in Montpelier, you might have seen. I know. <laughs> I've gotten stuff on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I do just want to yeah be mindful of time. So I think our our agenda for the next meeting is um, you know intros, agenda review, committee learnings, breakouts, you know minutes, uh, wanting to check in on the budget and check in on our work plan and outreach and fundraising. Maybe clump all those together. Um, all the CD, creative discourses work, and then this specific conversation around. Um, COVID um, and before other business and next meeting agenda. Does that sound good? Okay. So should we just, in, should we just invite folks to join us at like six, six o'clock? Would that make sense? Cool. Okay. And then I just had wanted to check in about um, our next meetings over the holidays. Cause we, so we're going to have a uh, Wednesdays, the city council meeting. And then, um, Cameron, you're always so good at this, of putting it right on the calendar. Did I already send those to y'all? No. So the next one is going to be on the 17th. The 17th. Stick to your schedule. Yep. That is the last day of Hanukkah. Right. And so I think that's why I wanted to bring it up because yeah. I might be heading over to my parents. Um, so they're in my pod, no, no worries. Um, so would it be, but then the next week is, um, is like right at, is Christmas Eve. So that does not make any sense either. Um, so is this our last meeting that which is just like so bonkers to think about? Um, or we can, or we like, we can continue to meet. We can meet on the 17th. You may also choose to reschedule your day or have a different day. You have tons of time to warn it, no issues there. Or you could take a holiday break, um, which some committees do choose to do and meet again. Well, that's New Year's. Well, so your every day is a holiday for the mm -hmm. future. So um, whatever the yeah. committee wants to do, I'm here to help. Does anyone have any well, thoughts? It, so my, my opinion is to wait until after the new year is a long time it's to a long not time. meet. So I would suggest if we could find another time, either the week of the 14th or early the week of the 21st. And I know we just switched to evenings after meeting in the mornings for a while. Um, would like yeah 5 30 to 7 okay i'm just gonna throw out a date 5 30 to 7 on monday the 21st work for folks um the 21st oh okay you can do that yeah pam does that work for you too as a potential I'm, I'm check right now number cool the 21st at 5 30 again 530 okay to 7. I'm fine with that. Cameron, that works for you too? Awesome. That was okay. great. Nice work, team. <laughs> okay, so Monday the 21st, 530 to 7. Um, and then after that will be um, Thursday, January 7th from 530 to 7. Is that right? Go back to our Thursday time. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Thursday the... January 7th. Okay. And then we'll just go back to alternating every other week, right? Every other week from there. Right? Is that is it every other week or is it first and third? I wasn't sure of that. Oh. Right now it's every other week. Um for ease of scheduling. Okay.
I got to run to do bedtime. I know I got to run too, but thank you guys um, so much. Thanks yeah. Everyone. Appreciate the thank meeting. You. Happy yes, holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. Thanks y'all. Michael, I didn't really take that many notes today. So um, I don't really have anything of substance to send you. Okay, well, I'll do my best from my chicken scratch here. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll talk right. to you soon. Okay, but oh, and I want to let you know that the the check, but the check. I saw your be. email. I'm just very behind on my replies today. I'm so glad. So don't don't bother replying. But okay. anyway, <laughs> just right, so you know, you. thank you for monitoring that. Okay, bye. Yeah, sorry. Thank you.